elections to Hastings Borough Council happen on May the 3rd. So Hastings in Focus has taken the chance to speak to the men who will be making the decisions once those elections are over. We're speaking to Peter Chowney, leader of the Labour Group and leader of the Council for the last three years. And we're also speaking to Rob Lee, leader of the Conservative Group, who are hoping to take control this time round. In this interview, we speak to Peter Chowney and we hear from him firsthand what his hopes, aspirations and ambitions for Hastings are in the coming years. Peter, in, in your opinion, what are the, the main achievements of the administration that you've led over the last few years? Um, I think there have been quite a lot of things. Uh, in particular, I think the, the continuing regeneration of the town. Um, the council's focused on a strategy of cultural regeneration using the kind of creative and cultural centre uh, sector, the arts sector, to kind of create economic regeneration in Hastings. And I think that's worked very well. Uh, focusing on improvements in the seafront and also the uh, compulsory purchase of the pier of course as well and getting that uh, yeah. restored again. Um, there are other things I think over the last couple of years that have been important. I mean linked to the cultural regeneration there was the, the Route 1066 festival yeah. uh, celebrating 950 years since the Battle of Hastings. That brought 70,000 visitors into town and uh, 3,000 local people took part in the events there so that was kind of pretty successful. And also there are other things such as the continuing Grot Busters programme uh, where we uh, serve notices on dilapidated properties to improve them, a uh, compulsory purchase programme of empty homes. And I think the continuing improvements to the seafront, um, just the things like new kiosks and so on, but uh, and the refurbishment of Bottle Alley as well and the kind of wonderful lighting scheme we've got in there now which kind of turns out to a rather dead space to the longest continuing lighting installation in the country, we believe, but uh, I mean, that's kind of quite spectacular as well, or can be when it's when it's uh, the performances are showing there. But, but but Bottle Alley, that's made a huge difference. Yes. It, it's um, yeah, it's, it's just completely transformed it. It has, yes, and that's been uh, again that was uh, using money that was kind of set aside for just the routine maintenance and repairs of it, coupled with other grant funding we got as well. So yeah. it goes to show the things you can do. I mean, the council is very short of money. We've lost a lot of funding. Um, but there are various funding pots you can tap into, something called the Coastal Communities Fund, uh, which we seem to have had a successful bid in every round of, and that helps you do things like those improvements on the seafront. Um, and the Selective Licensing Scheme as well, I think, has been an achievement, uh, which is where we have introduced uh, private rented housing licensing, and that's led to about 6,000 licenses being issued, uh, which in turn has led to um, improvements in a lot of very poor properties, uh, improvements to tenants' conditions, proper tenancy agreements and so on, and that's had a big impact too. Just just formalising relationships between yes, that's right, and, yeah. and tenants. Excellent. And you, you mentioned the kiosks in the seafront. Again, they're very visible. They're, they're, they're something that you can see. They, they've yes. tangibly improved the, the appearance of the place. Yes, that's right. And I, mean, I think having kiosks along there um, kind of encourages people to walk along as well and we're trying to get more people certainly in terms of tourism anyway to get people to move towards St Leonard's and go along the seafront that way because I mean St Leonard's has regenerated enormously and uh, you know that's becoming a more popular destination now you've got lots of interesting little independent shops there yes. and uh, and that's changed beyond recognition really over the last few years. Um, you, you mentioned money and you said the council's tight for money in terms of pounds and pence, because we hear about percentage reductions mm. and we hear that councils are being squeezed, but in terms of the pounds and pence, what has that meant to Hastings by the council in recent years? Well, it's meant a lot. I mean, if you compare sort of like with like, because the grants are never called the same thing and you don't get government money in quite the same way, but sort of making a like with like comparison from this current financial year we're just coming into to 2010-11 uh, financial year, um, We've lost cumulatively over that period about £45 million pounds. and uh, that means that our kind of total kind of external grant, if you like, uh, coming in from the government for just sort of the routine spending purposes, the total money that we got from the government um, at the beginning of that period is around about £10 million. Now it's only a little over £2 million, and that goes down to pretty much nothing actually in a couple of years' time. So uh, we have lost a lot of funding. And that obviously has had a dramatic impact. I mean, we used to employ about 600 staff. It dropped right down to about 300, actually. It's now gone up a bit, partly because of the selective licensing scheme and the people involved in that. 
So yeah, fifty percent staff reduction is is, is yes. sizable. In terms of services, in terms of frontline services, what sort of things is the council not able to do now that you know, five, ten years ago it was? Mm. Well, a lot of those funding reductions have been taken up by uh, increased efficiency, uh, which. You know, efficiency is kind of often a euphemism for losing staff, yep. which of course that's where the savings often come from. And that's through better use of IT, a lot of it, um, introducing new IT systems that I mean a lot of the kind of manual administrative tasks are now automated. So that saves money, although it does cost jobs. Um, and also we've, we've generated income as well. But in spite of that, yeah, there are some things, for example, we had a fairly large uh, community development team uh, who used to work on uh, the social housing estates and areas like that where they um, uh, worked with local residents, they would help residents associations form, they would service those residents associations, also employment and training initiatives as well, we did quite a lot around that too, but I mean all that I'm, I'm afraid is gone. Um, so uh, th there's a lot of things that we used to do in those more deprived areas that the grants for that simply aren't available now. And we're sitting in Alexandra Park, which is quite a stunning facility in the centre of town. The maintenance of, of parks and open spaces is, is not a statutory requirement. No, is that isn't. something that's heavily under pressure? It is under pressure. Um, we ha it's not something we cut massively, and we're not considering, a, you know, sort of getting rid of the parks mm. or giving them to a trust or anything. Uh, I think we want to keep those within the council. We've managed to protect it and we've done quite a lot here of course in Alexandra Park with the uh, water uh, quality mm. improvement as well and that's been quite a big scheme and probably one of our major uh, major achievements in terms of uh, because we were at risk of failing the new EU bathing water standards because of the poor quality of the uh, water that was running through the Alexandra Park stream and coming out on the beach. Right. Um, but. Uh, uh, partly through tracing misconnections, which is where people plumb toilets into surface water drains. There was a lot of work that, that went on. Uh, but then also to introduce um, a new kind of filtration and natural aeration systems into the, uh, into the ponds and lakes here in Alexandra Park and the floating islands and so on, which cleans up the water naturally. Yep. And that's, that's helped uh, to improve our bathing water quality, right. as well as, of course, with the, the quality of the water that comes through the park itself. One of those things you see going on and don't kind of fully understand yeah. the, impl yeah. the implications of what's Yes, happening. it is. I mean, it's introduced some nice, trickly, sparkly streams yes. between the ponds. Yes. But that does look nice, but it's primarily about oxygenating the water and improving the water quality, bringing in uh, micro predators, for want of a better phrase, yeah. to eat the bad bacteria. The council needs to be a bit more creative in terms of how it raises cash. And you've been talking quite a lot recently about the programme of buying commercial property. Mm. I mean, you've, you've, you've become quite a sizeable landlord in the, in the town. We have. I mean, the council always was, actually. Hastings Council already had a, a pretty large property owning uh, portfolio anyway. Uh, because Castleham and Ponswood Industrial Estates are mostly council owned and that was built kind of 40 odd years ago so you know the council had a lot of experience already of owning and running commercial properties yep. um, but uh, because councils can borrow money cheaply it's a way of raising revenue fairly quickly and uh, what you can do is borrow the money from the Public Works Loans Board uh, to buy commercial properties that are already tenanted uh, it's not because you you know there is a sort of policy reason for owning those it is purely about raising income from it because by the time you've paid off the loans and the interest on them you are left with a, a substantial surplus yep. which obviously you can use to fund council services uh, to replace those grants that have been lost yep. yes yeah, so quite important for the future then yes yes that's right and then the two biggest ones we've done that well three actually we bought our own premises uh, Muriel Massa's house on the seafront off a, an offshore company that used to own it that saved us a lot of money mm. Uh, but we also uh, bought the Settlescombe Road Retail Park, uh, which is uh, Dunelm and Pets at Home, and then yep. the Bexhill Road one, which is where TK Maxx is. Yep. And that's uh, generated a lot of income as well. And overall, uh, those um, income generating schemes have generated about £2.2 .2 million extra yep. over the last three years. So that's you know £2.2 £2 .2 million gap they'd be in the budget if we hadn't yes. done those. Yep. So, I mean, looking forward, we've, we've, we've looked back at, at what's happened. Your, your, your council is up for re-election. What 
are you offering the people of Hastings? What's, what's your vision? What's the Labour Party's vision for Hastings over the coming four years? I think the really big project, I suppose, that we'll be focusing on, and bear in mind, you know, with the limited resources, um, a lot of our focus has to be in, in raising money, income generation. I'll mention that a bit more in a minute. But I think the big thing that we are focusing on, want to prioritise, is uh, the redevelopment of White Rock Gardens, or what we're now calling the Bohemia Quarter, because the yes. council owns the land right the way from the seafront, right the way up to Summerfields Woods. Uh, there's the White Rock Theatre there, which was never designed as a theatre, uh, can only be run with a big subsidy and uh, isn't really, I know it's a cliche, but fit for purpose anymore. Yep. Uh, you've got Summerfields Pool, which, although I don't swim, everyone tells me isn't all that nice. Mm. So we need a new multifunction performance venue. We need a new leisure centre incorporating a swimming pool and fitness centre and so on. Yep. And those things, if you build those, they are much cheaper to run than the old ones mm. because uh, you can actually make income out of them rather than to subsidise them yep. like we do at the moment. But there would still need to be some capital generated for that. And I think if you look at the redevelopment of that whole area, um, you could include some new facilities like that. Uh, you could use some of the land for housing to generate the capital to do that. And you could kind of completely restore and regenerate the whole of the kind of White Rock Gardens and the area there, probably with the buildings up towards the back and more open space at the front. But I think a kind of a, a major project for that, it would take some time. And in particular, there's something called an area action plan that we have to do first, which is a statutory planning process. And consultation will start on that this, this year. Um, which enable people to kind of have their say on all this. But I see that as being the sort of major sort of physical project. Uh, we've just got some funding from the EU for something called um, community-led local development, uh, which is about uh, four million pounds or so, plus uh, an almost equivalent amount in match funding, uh, which will is targeted on the most deprived wards and will enable us to go back there and to do some physical improvements and to um, look into projects to improve employment prospects, skills training and kind of community development work, a bit like what we used to do right. actually yep. uh, before we lost the funding for it. Yep. Uh, and I think that could make a, a significant difference in those areas. It's, it's, it's not enough and it's only temporary, mm. uh, but I mean, that, that's uh, something that we at least have funding to do. Um, uh, but otherwise, I, mean, I think a lot of the focus is going to be about trying to generate the income to replace what we've lost in grant funding. And any other ideas? You, as you say, we've got the, the, the commercial property purchase programme. Any other innovative ideas or, or things that you're looking at that would well, there, bring more revenue in? Yeah, there, there's two other streams, really. I mean, one is um, uh, a housing company. The council has now set up its own housing company. And that will enable us to both acquire and develop housing uh, for rent, which is good. Not technically social housing, because the council isn't a housing provider anymore. It will be via this uh, council-owned company, um, uh, which is good because we need better quality, affordable, rented housing in town. Uh, but that will also be a way of generating some income. The other way is through energy generation. Hastings is, of course, the, the, the sunniest town in mainland UK. Yep. It's not Eastbourne at all, it's Hastings, some years. Um, but uh, it's also one of the windiest. So there is quite a potential here for generating electricity through sustainable means, uh, so through wind and uh, uh, photovoltaics. Um, and we're told that there is a potential there for through a local supply network, which is kind of the way of energy generation in the future, yep. Uh, to supply about 30% of the town's electricity needs uh, through wind and solar generation. And uh, you could then supply electricity to people locally cheaper than they could buy it off the grid, uh, but it would make a lot of money for the council as well. And frankly, if we really could do that, uh, as I say, it would be some years off. Yeah. Um, but if we really could do that, then that would uh, we wouldn't have to worry about government grants anymore because we could generate enough income from that uh, to, to make us self-sufficient easily. But as you say, that's, that's not a short-term project. No, it's not. But that's a long term. We, in the shorter term, we still have serious financial problems yep. as the grant gets cut back. An emerging two and a half million pound gap in the budget in by 2021. Um, and that's not going to be helped by those in the short term because those are much longer term projects. Because by 2021 government funding effectively disappears doesn't it? Yes it does, although I think the government uh, they slowly begin to rather belatedly recognise that local government finance is broken, I mean mm. it just doesn't work anymore. We've seen Northamptonshire have a section 114 notice served on it which basically means they run out of money. Uh, more councils will follow. Uh, not us, we're not in that position at the moment, 
it will most likely be county councils that are affected by that because of the big problems they have funding adult social mm. care. Um, but it does mean that local government finance has got to be overhauled in some way. Um, we're not expecting that to kind of make any huge difference to Hastings because our level of cuts, as it has been for most of the more deprived councils, has been much greater than the less deprived areas. Um, and we're not expecting it to kind of, you know, to, for huge resources to come in from the review they're doing of local government finance at the moment. Yeah. But um, uh, it, it will have to recognise the fact that local government simply isn't sustainable in the current funding model. But as I hear in Hastings, we're just thinking, well, you know, we'll just get on with it and try and generate the income ourselves rather than depend on government grant. You, you touched on the roles and functions of the County Council briefly there. There are, we've got two different councils. The, you, Hastings, we've got the Borough Council do some things. The County Council does others. Is it worth just briefly going over what the key functions of the yeah. Borough Council are? Yes. Because I'm, I'm sure there are people out there who don't understand the, the There split. are, and this happens all the time, and it comes up. I mean, interestingly, we've, uh, again, from the Labour Party, we've distributed to, or in the process of distributing, a sort of mini-manifesto uh, to every household in the borough. There's a link on that to the full manifesto online, which is 46 pages, if you <laughs> really want to read it. But in there, there is a detailed breakdown of what the borough council does, what the county council does, and what other people do too, that people often think of council services. I mean, basically, I suppose overall, district councils tend to do more things, uh, but they're sort of cheaper things. Mm -hmm county do a few things but they're very expensive things so in terms of that's why the council tax for the county the county council part of the council tax is much much bigger you know three four times the size of the four times the size of the of the borough bit of the council tax um, that's so they do social services adult social care they also do highways um, so everything about condition of roads and potholes and things that's all the county council yep. They used to franchise, well, well age, have an agency agreement, they called it, uh, with the district and borough councils, but they took that away to give it to a private contractor, and frankly, I don't think it's worked anywhere near as well since. Yeah. I appreciate, of course, that they have massive financial problems too, and they've had big cuts in their services, uh, but I do feel that uh, roads maintenance uh, and uh, um, uh, roads and footways uh, it was it was better and more responsive when it was managed locally, but that's not something we can influence, I'm afraid. So yeah, I mean the county does things like social services, uh, children's services, libraries, a county council as well, and highways, highways and footways, and uh, street lighting. Those are probably the main things that people notice that yep. are county council. Um, and, and finally, looking at this coming election from a, a party political point of view, can you sum up? relatively briefly, the, the, the values that underpin the campaign that the Labour Party is going to be fighting? Mm. Well, I think it's, uh, it, it is primarily around fairness. I mean, we, we, we recognise that Hastings is a very deprived town. And uh, I think there is still not enough recognition of that in coastal towns generally, but obviously in Hastings in particular, in terms of the, you know, the problems and resources you need in some way that has deeply entrenched problems of deprivation uh, certainly in some of the social housing estates and some of the areas where there's a lot of private rented housing too. And I think, although there's a limited amount councils can do to address that, I and mean, I think we do need to focus a lot on um, the needs of those areas and in, of those more deprived communities. Uh, as I say, through the uh, community-led local development scheme, we're hoping to do that. But I think it's also about the town's regeneration as well. So, uh, you know, encouraging uh, Hastings in the past has had a kind of pretty bad reputation, really. Nobody wants to come here, but obviously that's changing. It has changed. Um, and the town has a very different reputation now. Uh, it's kind of constantly getting mentioned nationally and mm. internationally as a kind of a cultural centre. It's become a place very fashionable. Where it has, yes, and somewhere where, uh, you know, things happen. There's an awful lot going on here. Uh, again, continue to support, promote all the festivals that are going on through the year, all the arts and cultural activities, and tourism remains a very important part of the economy. So supporting and promoting those uh, as, as, as kind of boosting the town's image and getting visitors here, getting new employers here, but then linking that to those problems of deprivation as well. Because what you don't want is 
people coming in for, for with with money, which is good in some ways. It boosts the economy, uh, but taking the jobs of new employment and so on, and local people being left out of that. So I think it's linking those two things together. It's about continuing the regeneration of the town, but trying to make sure that those neglected and deprived communities, uh, uh, and some of those communities are very poor in Hastings, are very deprived. Um, to link that into that and, and, and make them more a part of it in as much as we can and to make sure they benefit from that regeneration. And just remind people the election day is when? 3rd of May, Third of Thursday May. the 3rd of May. So that's the big day. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for chatting with me, Peter, and um, right. we can go and enjoy some of the, the rest yeah. of this lovely day. It is, yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>